Indios, the Native Americans from the reservations, and poor whites from Appalachia, and they were going to engage in massive nonviolent civil disobedience until Congress passed an economic bill of rights. It was Dr. King who said there had to be a radical restructuring of our socioeconomic system. It was Dr. King who said there must be a may have been involved. Dr. King was the victim of a program called COINTELPRO, Counterintelligence Operation, the object of which was to prevent the rise of a black messiah in the United States. Many black leaders were targeted, and we know that J. Edgar Hoover had a vitriolic hatred of Martin Luther King and made it his personal assignment to bring down Dr. King. And though they assassinated Dr. King 45 years ago, we stand here today, 45 years later, as a testament to the fact that they could kill the revolution, Mary, but they can't kill the revolution. That's why we're here today. So I want to call on Minister Ellis to come forward. Dr. King, one, was the ministry is not in buildings, but in the streets with the poor, with the oppressed, with those who have been the victims of violence. I'm going to call on Minister Tom Ellis of Enough is Enough to open this commemoration with a word of prayer. Give him a big hand. Father God, as we're gathered here today to pay homage to 45 years of the death of one of our strongest leaders, Dr. King, Lord, we just say thank you. We say thank you, Father, for the many who have found it not robbery, but who took time out of their busy schedules to come and to stand with men of courage and women of courage. We say thank you, dear Father, for those who have the courage to stand up against oppression, to stand up against police brutality, to stand in the spirit of Dr. King. So, Father God, as we're gathered here today, we just want everybody to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the fact that there's somebody who is a leader. Thank you for somebody for Jesus. Thank you, dear Father, for the Spirit. Thank you, dear Father, for Dr. King, who opened our eyes. Hey! 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 We are so glad. She came last week to speak with us at the Abyssinian Baptist Church. And I had to tell her that the People's Organization for Progress, we're not just an organization that deals with education, but we're an organization that deals with mobilization. And we were so glad she could come and speak to people in Abyssinian about what happened in 1955 but I asked if she could come back and march with us for what's happening to people in 2013 and she's here with us today. Give her a good hand. a picture. Look at this picture. This is a picture when Dr. King came to Newark, New Jersey. Last week, last Wednesday, the 27th of March was the anniversary, the 45th anniversary of Dr. King's appearance in Newark, standing next to Martin Luther King. In 1968. Thank you very much, Larry. Uh, I said last week Larry was a warrior. We all know that. And uh, wherever Larry is and where he's going to be, I'm going to be there too. People, I come out here. If you, were you going to carry a sign? Well, I'm out here for that. I, I didn't come here to look. I came out here to, to uh, be part of this. And I, uh, I'm just, just pleased that I had the opportunity to. I was blessed, really, 
to have the opportunity to know Dr. King, to be with Dr. King, and I, I did tell the story about Dr. King uh, uh, pulling up to Abyssinia Baptist Church that, that evening, and uh, I had a scholar, he said, but uh, I'm going to New York, uh, Harry's having some people at his house tonight to uh, raise money for my organization. Anyway, if you remember, those of you who may be old enough to remember or have read about it, Dr. King was against the Vietnam War. He spoke strongly against the Vietnam War, and the other so-called civil rights leaders said that Dr. King shouldn't be talking, that's not our business. And he stood up and said, look, that's, that war anywhere is a war, that we should not be killing people that we don't even know when they're killing our people here. So he got up and he spoke there. But anyway, the church was, was packed, he made his speech, and when he came out, uh, he said, Bill, why don't you ride over to New York with me? And I looked across the street, people were coming out of the church, uh, and he waved on me, and, and there was a Newark police officer who was assigned to him that day. He said, Bill, I'll bring you back. I said, I have to move my car, but I'll see him next time. And the last memory I have of Dr. King is him waving goodbye to me out of that back window of that car. And of course, the next time I saw him was at, at, at his funeral the following week. So I had the opportunity, I was really blessed to have known him and walked with him. And Actually, this picture was taken in 1956, when, oh, okay. but longer, earlier than that, when Dr. King, Medgar Evers, A. Philip Randolph, and uh, some of us were out at the NACP convention uh, in San Francisco, where I was one of the speakers along with Dr. King and A. Philip Randolph. Best for my life, and I will be wherever he is, and us. I was, people were blowing horns, and I was trying to hear the speeches that Dr. King was giving, because his, his speeches are still relevant. And I think this place, we should not be able to have any cars drive through here right now. There should be everyone out here who believes in freedom, believes that, believes that we have a lot more work to do, should be out here with us. I come here because it's the right thing to do. And you, uh, believe me, wherever I see Pop, I'm going to be there. And I want to say thank you very, very much for this opportunity. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you a lot. Everybody has their own consequences. Even even this world in general. This world in general has its own consequences. At the same time, a lot of people out here could be doing a lot of unnecessary stuff, but at the end of the day, we here to take a stand and make something happen. Are there any other young people want to say anything? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, I do. How y'all doing? Yes. Can, can, can I get a piece? Peace, yeah. let's, show, let's show some respect to this woman. How you doing? Oh, oh, oh. I just want to say that in the Bible, you know, I'm a, I'm a very spiritual person. I, um, in the Bible, I can't quote it exactly, but it says that the first will be last and the last will be first. This day is monumental because we're here to honor this woman. And on this day, we also want to raise the consciousness of our people about peace. Now, when it comes to student um, involvement, it's something that we definitely need to be involved in. It was the students 
who was a part of and formed the original Black Panther Party. That's the right. game changed in this country, so we need the students in college to be in here. That's you know, right. I'm a student at Essex County College where 15,000 students, and surprisingly the graduation rate is 5%. With 15,000 students, we need help with that. We need That's to do right. something about that. A retention rate of 46%, a transfer rate of 17%, and a 96% dropout rate of African American males every semester. We need to do something about that now. Please come out to our Pride Day tomorrow from 10 to 5 in the gym area. And spread the love. I share. I share. Any other young people? Any other young people want to say something? Right here. Right. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Divine Okoye, and I'm from Nigeria. And I want to give Woo! it's uh, more than a glory to be in your presence today, man. For you made history, and it's not a lie. Yes, you did. And we are still continuing to make history because we are black and we are proud. That's right. This color is not a lie. No, it's not a lie. We're here for a reason, and we're going to make a change. And the change shall start from us. That's us. right. People here out here will make that change happen. Right. And I'm going to do it at the county college. And I'm here with Hip Hop Student Association. It's a movement. Oh, we're more than talking about music. We're here for our culture. That's we're here for the right. black and we're proud. Oh, and we shall be free. Oh, it's not a lie. Yes, we will be free. We are free. Because one of us is out there in the White House, and he looks just like us. Yes. Yeah. Our president is black again, and it shall continue. God's grace. And I'm happy to be here. You know, I'm there for a reason. We all are here for a reason. And we all can make that change. We just got to come together and make it happen. And love go out to all. Hey, Bob, I want to say greetings, 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 people. My name is Edward Godfrey. I'm a student at Essex County College. And just look around right now. What you see? You see, mostly elders. We need to get these youngers back out here on the streets. We need these youngers back out here on the streets, man. We ain't playing no more. I mean, the government, they ain't treating us right. The system, they ain't treating us right. They all working for each other. We need to start creating our own. We need to create our own. There ain't no more working for this person, working for this person. Let's step up and work for ourselves and create our own nation. Yeah. What's up with that, huh? We have to do that. Are we coming out here for one day a month and then back to the back to the same old book BS the next day? That's right. I want that. Nah, nah, we can't have that no more, man. We out here, we really want to mean what we say. We out here for the cause. And if y'all playing around, then y'all might as well leave now. That's so right. I'm out here for a real revolution, man. And I want to give thanks to sisters like this. Yes, yes. I want to give thanks to sisters like this who helped us along the way and people on our ancestors. It's, it's, it's reviving in me right now. We need to bring it out. All of y'all got it in y'all. All of y'all. All of y'all. We need to take more initiatives. We need to go door to door. Knock just like how other people do. Door to door. Knock on. We need to bring the youngins out of here. Man. The youngins. The youngins is, going, is who's going to really help y'all move this revolution. He's gonna really help y'all move this revolution. I'm trying to tell y'all, man, we gonna be out here. We are the soul. We are the soul for this America. We built America. So why do we get the end of the stick?